Hello and welcome. This video is brought to you by TheStreamingAdvisor.com. Tailor your entertainment with streaming. And what we're going to look at in this video is a really great group of updates to the app known as Plex. Plex offers so much stuff, including access to any sort of a media server that you build using your media, shared information, free movies, free TV shows, podcasts, and more. And the more that they have added most recently is really impressive. You want to make sure that you've got the latest. You can just open it. You know, we've got the latest app. But what you want to do is go into whichever programming you're using. If you have a Roku, Fire TV, Android TV, whatever you have, you just want to make sure that you have the latest of everything. So you want to make sure that your device itself is up to date. And you want to make sure you have the latest edition of the app. And I was already searching for something, so let's just go back. And we'll just look for Plex on its own. And you see we've got Plex. You're going to click on it. And if we need a new one, it will say update. We do not. It says, it says open. But... You're going to want to make sure you have the updated app on whatever device you're using. And here we are. This is Plex. And in general, if you've been using Plex, it looks more or less the same. You'll notice all the same options. At least everything that you had before. But there are some new bells and whistles built in. Specifically down here in the settings, you'll notice that there's an actually... Yeah, a setting down there that says streaming services, which we'll look at in a minute or two. But first, we're just going to talk a little bit about the new look and how you can change some things around. They've added themes to Plex, which almost feels like a, a callback to their way back when roots with, you know, XBMC and things like that, where you can change the look. It doesn't change the setup. It just changes the lighting but, you know, it's a, it's a nice way to add your own personality a bit. And you can change the home screen icon, which is really cool. But there's all sorts of different variations on that Plex arrow after years and years of it just being black and yellow. That's how we change the one on our home screen. You can change the layout of the content as well as what's going on in the background of your stuff when you're scanning through. We're not going to do too much with that right now because what we want to do is jump into some of the cooler settings that have been added in on this. But in general, the settings are very simple to reach. They're right there at the bottom where you can find them. And I don't know. I'm kind of a sucker for customization, so I like being able to change the icon. But the big deal here is what is happening in this section called Discover. Discover is a new section. You'll see that at the top you have trailers. and It almost harkens back to when I was younger. I, mean, I remember the first time you could start watching trailers for movies online. It was like, wow, we don't have to wait till we go to the movies to see it. There used to be whole apps just for that. But, you know, these days it's just a feature within Plex, which is nice. But you'll see this row. It says available from your watch list. And if you're used to Plex, you're used to the idea of a watch list based on things on your server. But what you'll see here is, you know, Breaking Bad, for instance, is on my watch list. And look at where you can watch it now. It, you know, it lists all of these different places where you can either watch it because you have a subscription or rent it or buy it. And it does that with titles from, get this, about 145, 150 different services. Now, this is advertised as a universal search and a universal watch list. And, okay, there's probably 7,000 apps out there. But within the 150-something things they've got, that is going to comprise nearly every single mainstream popular app that is available online for streaming. So, don't worry. Whatever you most love is probably there. As you see, not only does it search for the apps that you've got, you've got Paramount Plus for 1883, 
It's also available on a server that I've had access to. So if you are looking for something and you've got it on your server, it's going to find it the same way as though it were a regular mainstream streaming service. And that is a really cool thing. I know a lot of people are going to appreciate that. Especially the way some things are more walled off on certain operating systems, like, for instance, the Apple TV here. But the trending on your services is going to take content from whatever it is that you have access to. And that's something that you set up in settings will show you. You don't have to get feeds from anything in particular, but you can put as many of the choices that they have as you like. Looks like some things are available all over the place. I'm sure there's somebody out there going, JoJo's Bizarre Adventure, that's, that's my favorite, it's awesome. I've never heard of it. Not a judgment, but I might check it out because it recommended it to me. You see that they allow you to purchase things as well. Like I said, again, you're not purchasing from Plex. You're purchasing it from various services. That must be how some of that stuff got on the other guy's server. So, you want to add things into your Plex so that you can find it? Here's where you do it. It's down in the settings like we showed you earlier. And this service list, it doesn't go A to Z. It goes A to P, I believe. But it has so many things that people subscribe to. It even gets to a point where it's a little derivative. Some of the services are... You know, like, maybe don't even really exist. Uh, you'll notice as we scroll through, there's a HBO Max and HBO Now, which, you know, it's, hasn't really existed since HBO Max launched. If you're wondering how they're doing all this, Plex has a partnership worked out with companies like Just Watch and Real Good so that, you know, they can work this stuff in. Plex is really good for not reinventing the wheel, and just finding ways to collaborate with others. And they did so. Here, here's the HBO, HBO Max sort of thing that I was talking about. But it's really awesome to look at the gigantic amount of different apps that are working with Plex on this. And this is the way that things are going to work. You'll notice something listed on a service. And that's all well and good. What it does when you jump in on Plex is you see a show you want to watch, you click on the show that you're going to watch, and then you choose the way that you want to watch it. Plex doesn't have like an internal player that allows you to watch anything through Plex. So what that means is that you're going to have to have the actual app that encapsulates the thing that you want to watch, and we're going to show you that. They still offer the stuff like the live TV feeds, which you know, is based on the internet. And the app and the search will also work with things like if you've got a tuner, like an HD Home Run. A lot of people use that with Plex. You can work that in as far as your searches go. We don't have one of those set up at the moment, but that is something that you can do just in case you're wondering. Still offers the podcasts, the music, the web shows, but... Let's jump back in on this Discover feature. And I'll show you kind of what I was talking about concerning choosing things. So we'll jump in on Daredevil. A lot of people might not realize that it's on Disney Plus now and not Netflix. But you can buy it digitally if you like. And it gives you multiple options to do so. When you choose something, what it's going to do is launch into the actual app that has it, like I said. So this says, you know, hey, this is on Disney+. Plus. It's downloaded, but we're not signed in on this machine. So if we want to watch Daredevil, we've got to sign in. We're not. We're just going to move along. But you still see, you can still add it to your universal watch list. And so again, very helpful. It can even let you know what's available on your watch list and where it is. You can, you can see when things change. If Daredevil were to drop off of this and jump onto something else, you would be able to find it through Plex. Of course, I can't see what's changing at the moment because I'm seeing it all for the first time. 
as you go through, though, you'll just see that there is just a lot more to grab at. And I think that this is going to solve a lot of problems for people. That you know, Programs like Just Watch and Real Good and others have been working to try to help people simplify the way that they go about finding content. But by putting it all in one app, you're combining two searching services, combining all of your locally run media, your server access, and everything else, it's almost like Plex becomes the operating system. For instance, with Apple TV here, you can open Plex and never have to open anything else. You're, we're watching right here. We did a search for Garfield. And when I was looking for Garfield, what I was actually looking for is, you know, the cat. Garfield. But, as you see, it's going to return actors with the last name Garfield. And, of course, anything else that has Garfield in the title. I don't think that 2017 movie is about a, a cartoon cat. I'm just, just taking a wild guess there. But, again... When you do this search through Plex, it's going to show you every single instance that it has available either through Plex or through one of the hundred and such and services that it works with. So, you know, it's on Hulu and Disney Plus, Tubi for free. And you can go through and, you know, find all of the other instances of Garfield. Garfield and Friends was the show when I was a kid watching on Saturday afternoons. Look at all the places you can find it. And the only thing that really compares to this sort of search results is like Hulu or even like maybe a Fire TV. But I think that the way that this goes about it, it's a very attractive system. It's a good looking little interface. One thing I have noticed is that you know, if you click on the cast lists through IMDb, it doesn't give you say, like, information on other movies that they've done, which kind of surprised me, because usually within Plex, that is a feature. But in general, this is, you know, a nice way to approach things. And, you know, I just think it's a great step in the right direction as far as content aggregation. Plex has been working for years to give people multiple ways to access things and be entertained. And I think that this is going to be a big winner. It would probably work really well for anybody who's got one of those, you know, like, non-brand Android boxes. You know, something that isn't, like, just not like an Android TV actual box, but, you know, just an Android-based thing. This might be a really cool way to pull all of your things together by giving you an interface that you can bounce around with a remote control and just enjoy on its own. Now, I did want to mention something important, and that's that this app is only able to launch into third-party things like, you know, going from Plex to Disney Plus and things like that. That only works on iOS, on mobile devices, on Fire TV, and Android TV. That means that it, you've got Plex for something like a Samsung TV or LG TV, even Roku. Right now, it does not do that. There are no promises that it will, just... Plex has said that they're working on seeing what they can do to make everything play nice. But don't expect to be able to do that with Roku. Roku will still let you have a universal watch list and even let you do the universal search through Plex. You just can't find a title that's on Netflix or something and then click on it and watch it through Plex the way that we showed you with Daredevil. So, kind of bad news for Roku users, but... Just wanted to get that out there so that, you know, to avoid questions later on. Like, well, why won't it work for this? But that's that. That is the new app. So, you know, as far as Android and Apple TV and Fire TV, this is a groundbreaking game changer. As far as Roku, it's still a good app. It's still a very good app. And will help you find things. I hope you found this helpful. If you did, please subscribe. Share this video with your friends. And as always, I'm Ryan Downey, the streaming advisor. Stream on, my friends.